welcome back, my young Padwans, to Plus the Mouse with our thoughts on part two of Obi Wan Kenobi. <laughs> so far, okay, 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 we're already two, we're already two episodes in, but so far, each each one is getting better and better. This is so amazing. Let's see if we can have that go, go throughout the whole series. So. We're going to go straight into it, because basically, we left, we left for this second part, we just go straight in and pick up where we left off at, at the end of part one. We just call it Obi-Wan. Reluctantly! <laughs> but, of course, accepts um, the rescue mission to go and rescue Layla, which takes them um, to uh, the planet Dayu. Now, at first, because I thought this looked like a really nice really nice player for it. It looked, all, it looked all very sort of futuristic. But like, you get you get your typical sci science picture films with, with uh, that are sort of set in the future. Um, it did it sort of looked like a futuristic city that who knows maybe one day we could be living in. Um, on the, that's how it looked to me on the surface. And then once we sort of got below the surface it just was yeah it just looked like just a bunch of sewers. <sighs> Honestly. <laughs> But yeah, so there were a couple of interesting things that I pointed out from this episode. Number one is a uh, is Obi Wan is how out of touch Obi Wan is, um, and how he's not the the, the the fire he once was. But that you can argue is to do um um with his his age, and I think. They even put, they even do, the, the buyers even point that out, don't they? <laughs> when they get him straight away, they even point it out. But, in defence of that, we're all going age, unfortunately. So, uh, that we can, we can let slide. My other main interesting point I pointed out was how, just how much Layla doesn't know about the whole situation. She's been so guarded, she's been so sheltered, and this is what her annoying little brat of a cousin, you know, remember him? The one that was rude to the droid. Remember him? That just shows how much that angry of a little cousin she has. Kind of right. He didn't, she doesn't know that much. Because she doesn't know about why the Jedi are pretty much all but extinct. She doesn't, she doesn't, um, when eventually the other one does rescue her, she just literally doesn't know anything at all. Um, and even and just and she does a lot of questioning. Oh my word! Is, is this how kids are like these days? Constantly, you know, just asking question after question after question after question. It's like learn some trust, kids. Seriously, if someone's coming to help you and rescue you, just go with it. Just do what they say. But of course, she can't do that. But she's constantly questioning her out. Oh, I don't know how I would have handled this. But anyway, um, that just shows how much. Despite how, how what her father has involved with it, she doesn't know much about it, what's been going on at all. So she doesn't get why Obi Wan can't use his powers, can't use the Force, can't use his like lightsaber. You know she spots it quite quickly. <laughs> um, she doesn't. She doesn't. Because obviously he's trying to do this on the down low. Because obviously he knows any signs of a Jedi gives the gateway and he'll be caught and he lights him to the chest. See, you know, somebody does get that later on, do they? Do they? Yeah. <laughs> the light. Oh. But yeah, but that's not for that. But yeah, but uh, he's trying to do it on the down low. But of course, he knows any jet, jet spots for Jedi, and they'll, get, they'll catch on to him. Um. Speaking of how. Um. Earlier, when I was before he finds later, we do. He does end up meeting. Um. What can we what can we call um Oh I forgot oh, how, how to pronounce his name now. This is I'm no good for pronouncing names. Haja Estri. What can we what can we call him? Connor Common? Low life street rat? Scoundrel? Low life? So anyway, because he's because we saw he's um he pretended to be the Jedi, you know. It's not that easy to pretend to be a Jedi, though. Know? I mean, because he, but he thought really a lot easily with, you know, got the robe, got the, got the, got the, got the clothing, um, I'm gonna do the whole mind trick, you know, but do like that, I'm gonna do all clever eyes, 
I have a family here that would need to it. I mean, I just thought... Now, I will admit... <laughs> I will admit, at first, I was kind of believing it. I was kind of, at first, I was kind of believing that that worked. And then, of course, it wasn't until our, our Obi-Wan actually, you know, just swear it all out and just literally one swift move unbelled it all it was just basically just a great big old trick and that I had, that had to hear something but a con artist well, mm-hmm absolutely but yeah so yeah so but of course does end up giving a one information to get Leia obviously finds Leia and then obviously as I mentioned she gets all, she gets all just, just Leia spends the whole episode being an annoying brat doesn't she just, just an annoying brat she does not, she just, just doesn't trust anyone from the get-go. Despite the fact that he very much said to her, I was sent by your father, here to rescue you, let's go. She's determined to make the entire rescue mission even, even more harder than it already is. Honestly, Earth has a break. Yeah, so that's, I know. And the third, the third point I, that I pointed out here is that the, is, the, is to the Inquisitors. Now, what I've noticed, particularly in this episode, they may all have the same common goal, which is to serve the Empire, hunt down the Jedi, but they don't really look like they're a well-oiled machine. I mean, we saw in episode one how the Grand Inquisitor is a bit sort of wary of Reba, uh, and he senses her impulsiveness, her ambition to try and get Kenobi. Uh, which is really plain to see here. The first episode was kind of sort of subtle, that impulse from, from Reba. Here, it's full blown display. She goes rogue. Oh, well, she? She goes really, really rogue. It's just, and I think, you know, a little bit of a, bit of a deeper attention because all, I, she's going to go all, me, 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 I, I kidnapped the girl. I killed this plan. I work for the bounty hunters. I tracked down Kenobi. I found Kenobi. It's all, it's all, give, girl, give us a rest here. It's all, me, 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 me. So the ground criticism was right when he said the loss, the loss about how Reva's impulsive because, oh my God, it's on full display here. But the criticism is just so untrustworthy for be a part of one another. And I'm just wondering, at some point here, now of course I did not see what 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 came towards the end coming, but I was thinking right, thinking about this as I was thinking right. At some point, one inquisitor is going to end up stabbing another inquisitor in the back, literally, because the way they just don't all seem that trustworthy one another. It's even though you're all supposed to be on the same side, you're all supposed to board the exact the same executive order here. Fine. Find the Jedi, hunt them down, or in some cases, bring them back to the Empire for interrogation, which I think was the plan for Obi Wan. They don't all seem to be on trust on the same page, and I, and I just kind of felt it was only a matter of time before somebody, before one Inquisitor goes, "Do you know what? I'm off this," and just stabs another Inquisitor in the back. This, that's what that's what I was thinking. Didn't think it would happen in this episode. I thought it'd be maybe sort of later on the line. Maybe 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 maybe, maybe, maybe part four. Probably definitely part five. Not at this stage. No 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 no. no. Um, but I'll save it for lip towards the end. I'll save it towards the end though because we'll focus more on um <laughs> on uh, on obviously Layden Kenobi. Um, but before we do um. Because obviously Reba's been out because in this last episode we knew that the whole Claire's kid was Reba's plot to, to snuff Kenobi out. Well, when he has to go awry and, and the rest of the quiz is on the scene, she still just wants to try and just do it herself and even gets the bounty hunters to place a bounty on Kenobi so now the whole planet knows. Also, we didn't see that many other bounty hunters, did we, come after him? We saw at least one, we definitely saw one or two. There wasn't that much of a bounty chase. Maybe because they all, maybe all by the first thought, right, no, if we, uh, we get involved, the Grand Inquisitor's going to kill us. And one of them did, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> With all this, in front of all those stormtroopers. Saw them in this part, didn't we? Yeah. We saw some stormtroopers. I wasn't sure we were going to see any of them. Uh, them. Um, 
Yes, that was nice. So that's the show that they were sort of established right from the very beginning of the Empire. So there's foundations there. So nice to see. So a nice little reference. No, there. So I'll say the Grand Inquisitor stabbed in the back a little bit later on. But what I want to focus on for now is the bond, the sort of a strange bonding we had between Obi Wan Kenobi and Leila. Because he spots straight away how she seems to be a bit more wiser for her, for her age. Because and even and he asks her how old are you? and she just goes ten. And it's like, well, you don't sound like you're ten. And it's like, well, yeah, absolutely, yeah. She, Definitely, this shows up really is going to be. Um, so, but throughout the whole um, episode, basically, you've got a book that we try to get this little uh, this little 10 year old urchin, because let's say that's what she is, this 10 year old urchin, just trying to get her to trust him. And um, in typical true T Hollywood fashion, it takes a near death experience. For that, for that trust to uh, to form, but um, because uh, eventually Leia does find out uh, the reason why we're here in the first place, and decide and and decides the best thing to do is just run away. How's that gonna make it better? How's that gonna make it better? You away from Kenobi, to Kenobi. You just gonna go and up getting caught by a crystal again? That's just that was just. Basic schoolboy error. I don't get why she did that. What was she gonna gain from running away from Kenobi? Was it gonna, he wasn't gonna, he wasn't gonna harm her. Unlike the Inquisitors, who would probably have no problem swiping, swiping her down in one swift move. Well, no, that's probably a bit, bit too much. But hey, these Inquisitors will probably do anything, as we, as we know. I mean, as we saw in the last episode, Reba was prepared to kill Owen in cold blood. But, uh, so yeah, so who knows? Some of them, some of them might actually thought, mm, yeah, oh, yeah, I will just have a go, a quick. That's not how it happens. But you never know. You never know. Some of them actually might go that far. We do not know. We still, we're still only just young in this series. But you never know. Turns out. <laughs> but uh, I just don't get that. What was the point of running away? You just go make make the whole situation worse, and she did. Because she even ends up jumping off the roof and uh, and then he ends up dying. And um, But of course Kenobi has to use the force uh, to save her. And that of course then proves uh, to Layla that, she, that firstly he's a Jedi. Because even she even, cause she has a cheat to question if he's a Jedi or not. <gasps> that's, that's quite rude. <clears throat> there are, we do have old Jedi. It's just they are not supposed to be Except, I think when you get to old Jedi, it's supposed to be the pad, pad masters, aren't they? The pad ones. Yeah. I mean, Yoda, I mean, he's, um... How old is he, Yoda? Is he Yoda? I don't know, but he's quite very, very old. So, I thought that was quite... So, I thought that was quite weird, Leia, because there are old Jedi. It's just they don't normally go out about on, on dangerous missions. They're more sort of training the next generation and all that. But, of course, here we are where we are. <laughs> But thought that was but thought that was quite rude, because Kenobi doesn't look that old. Okay, because remember this is set well before we get episode four, so he's not that old. Look, I thought that was quite rude. I mean, okay, we do see signs about the begin beginning of episode how Kenobi is sort of out of touch and not the fight he was was, but that's not to say he's old. It's just he spent the last ten years on in on Tatooine in solitude, and so he's not needed to use any of his Jedi. Uh, fighting skills, because obviously, because obviously we all know to draw attention to him. So I thought with Leia, I thought that's cheek of her. Well, that was quite rude. He's nowhere near that old. Neither is you, McGregor, for that matter. So I thought that was quite rude. Anyway, but yeah. So eventually, trust is finally restored. Just as Hatcher comes by, to now sort of lend a helping hand. <laughs> you know, big old. You become a con man, well let me prove you otherwise. <laughs> and sort of uses his, his, his disguise to good distraction. Um, because, but I do love it, I do love it a lot. But while you're while giving um, Kenobi this information about how to get, make their escape, um, their film, you know, by heading to a cargo port, 
Even I was thinking, hmm, can we really trust you? And, well, that's basically how to put it. You get to find that out for yourselves, which, of course, it does. Um, does. And Harder helps a little bit more by trying to stop Reba from finding them, but, of course, it doesn't work. Doesn't work. I mean, she is not, she was not fooled. Like, like Kenobi. Like Kenobi. Uh, like our only one, Reva was not fooled by that disguise. Her, her dirt. So, so, I think what, so I think the moral of this episode is, is don't try to dress up and pretend to be a Jedi because it, cause you're not going to fool anyone. Okay? You, 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 it's just not going to work. Okay, so, don't, don't, so, that, so, so there we go. If we've, if we've learned something here, it's not to go, go around pretending and dressing up to be an act like Jedi because no one's going to buy it. But our Obi Wan didn't, and sadly, neither did Reba. <laughs> Which, of course, then leads to the big whole confrontation on the car. Go oh, and oh my, this this felt a bit like cat and mouse here, didn't it? With Reba sort of really like as we like like as, uh, as we mentioned in the last episode, how when we first met the Inquisitors and they could sense a. Ju and they in intercepted that slurring, was it? Um, and they could smell, they could sort of sense a Jedi was there, but they were just like to sort of toying with the Jedi, you know. Because they could, because they could have been easy to swoop in and uh, and you know, killed him right there and cut front and center cobble it. But they thought, no, we'll have a bit of fun here. This is probably the this is probably gonna be the the weakness of the Inquisitors. They just like to play with their prey. And I think that's gonna gonna be their weakness, as we saw, because Obi Wan's able to get away. But that was not because Reba uh is sort of lacking in her skills, it's because the her big boss comes back to sort of go right Reba <laughs> I actually love how the ground Chris comes like, Reba, I cannot put up with you being, being rogue anymore. Stand down. I'm going to take him up here. But not before, not before, uh, but not before Reba sort of delivers the killer blow to Obi-Wan by bringing up Lord Vader. Oh. oh, does that hit hit Kenobi like a ton of bricks? Because he because he spent right okay. He has spent the last ten years thinking that um uh, uh, that Anakin died after their encounter after their duel on Mustafa, and because but of course that is not the case because obviously Obi Wan did not have the didn't basically have the guts to basically um, finish him off, which is what he should have done. All right, because if you remember, if you go back to Revenge of the Sith, if you remember Obi Wan was very, very reluctant to have to go and face Anakin. He did not, not want to do it, and even and actually even said to the other, "Let me go and do a Palpatine." It was, it was almost like it was almost like he's trying to beg the other, "Let me to let him go and deal with Palpatine," and, but Yoda was like, "No." No, if you go to the fake tribe face poverty, there's a very high chance you are not coming back. But he was basically you know, about trying to say, look, you're not. You might think you're strong enough to face poverty, but actually you're not. And Yoda was absolutely right because in Avengers: The Sith, even Yoda sort of match with poverty in uh, their, that jewel they have, kind of on Coruscant, that kind of, that kind of sort of ends in sort of a, sort of a, sort of a stalemate, really. Um, because neither one is able to really defeat the other. And so the other then obviously just flees. Um, and Palpatine, of course, goes to, to find uh, Vader because he can send he's in, in peril. So, of course, as we know, that means poor Obi-Wan has to go onto the Mustafar and face... Uh, Vader himself, and of course that's a it's of course it's a lengthy draw as we all as we all know, and eventually, Obi Wan is able to sever uh, Anakin's legs and his left arm, 
which, as we all know, leads to the bank of the law of the lava flow. And of course, here's where we have that. Oh, poor Obi Wan. Here's where, we, and that's where we get Obi Wan literally doing his sort of distraught rant at his former apprentice. You know, you know, and basically, you know, because he's just so distraught about what his, his apprentice has become. And of course, we get. Well, that's of course where Obi Wan goes for how. You are the chosen one! You are to... Well, is it? Let me see if I can, let me see if I can do this. Let's test my... How much I love the prequels. You were... I said you were to... Bring back... Look. I got ahead there. You were said you were supposed to destroy us, did not join them! Bring back the boss, not leave it in darkness! That's where... There we go, that was it! That was it! <laughs> Knew it, just got a bit too ahead of myself. <laughs> and oh... That is such a hard scene to watch, and that in the immense sleep because oh, poor everyone is literally you can tell his heart breaking at that point because point, and of course ends it with saying how oh you my brother Ray Kim and I loved you, and of course everyone eventually walks away because he because he just because at that point uh, Kim's basically just he's basically in flames really, and you think yeah no, yeah no one's gonna survive that. Well. Yeah. Really, what Obi Wan should have done is save his light. Save his light. <laughs> this is this is going to become more okay. Catch, isn't it? Light save us the chest. <laughs> should have just done it, or if he had, or if he had, or if he had, or if he had a blaster with him, he could have just got it out and just go and just you know shoot. Uh, you know, so I get so no, just so I get like a uh, like a merciful death rig because it is quite. Gruesome having to watch I like him sort of being burnt alive. You know, you don't you don't want to see that. I don't, I don't know how everyone manages it, even in in Brent the Sith. Um But really what everyone should have done is make sure Alan King was actually dead. Cause we all cause as we all know as we all know that did not happen. I King somehow is still well, of course is still alive and of course becomes the evil scourge that we all know for episodes 4, 5, and 6. Well, for those of us who enjoy 4, 5, and 6. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, we'll come back to here. Come back to... Back back to the episode. Obi-Wan basically still has, has spent the past 10 years thinking that, um, that Iakin did die after the result of their duel on Mustafa. Now, of course, we all know that was not true. And, of course, the... Empire knows that's not true, but of course he didn't know, and Reba even worked up for herself afterwards. When afterwards, she sort of sense that everyone didn't know, and it's, well, and has to reiterate by actually naming Vader by his real name, of course, Anakin Skywalker, and that really hit Obi Wan all like a, really to the gut. And I look, and I do love how. Uh, the episode ends where they're on that ship and literally you can see how distraught he is because he just literally can't believe that his dear brother, former Padwan, is actually still alive after all these years. So again, as I, uh, so again, as I know, talked about the last episode, how Obi-Wan's mental state was a big peachy fat last episode, I had a little uh, reminder bit again that the events of obviously the prequels and particularly Revenge of the Sith have still played to him even to this very day so brilliant. So I just loved how that ended up was literally him dealing with the fact that oh I can still alive. But speaking of somebody who did get lightsaber to the chest is of course the Grand Inquisitor because so we cut back and then and, 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 and what's interesting here though is that is that because of the Grand Inquisitor that's how Obi was able to make his escape. So the Grand Inquisitor comes back in to basically deal with Reba that allows Obi Wan to go away. Because <laughs> he comes in, sees Re Reba, literally has had enough of her impulsiveness, and well, she tries to basically go, Right! Stand aside. Let me, sh let me stand aside, you, you rough, uh, you uh, least, whatever we called earlier on. This is, how the, this is how the big boys do it. But before, but before he even gets a chance, Reba just goes, Let's do it to the chest. I was like, "Ooh!" Because I did, because I did not see that coming. Even though 
so far throughout this episode, it's been giving me signs that these Inquisitors really don't seem to get along with them all. And, I, all that, and I'm just wondering, how long is it going to take before one of them actually does stab their third Inquisitor in the back? Here we go! It's in part two of six! <laughs> and so, yeah, so he gets stabbed for the test and he goes down. And that is probably going to be the end of him. Because it, it, like it did look like a fatal wound, didn't it? It did look like a fatal wound to him. Uh, so, yeah, and I did end the episode thinking, well, he's dead now. But hang on. Is he though? Because I, I don't know much about these Inquisitors. I don't know much about uh, the Inquisitors. Um, and it did, to me, it, it did look like Reba like, stayed into the chest. But did she go for the heart? If she did, then obviously, yeah, he's dead. Um, I suppose we'll have to wait and see in part three, won't we, if he comes up. And then we'll go, well, she's alive after all. And if he is, well, then Reba's going to get it. She probably does deserve to get it, because... Here we go again. Her ambition to find Kenobi is really clouding her judgment. But I just want to know why. What is it? What is it? We learn it into part one. It's and then here in part two, it's it's reeky like a bad smell. But it's like, why is she so determined to bring Kenobi, Kenobi in? I really do hope by the end of this we do find out what it is. But, but. The end of the episode, oh my god, you left me wanting more. Because now I'm thinking, oh, because obviously the episode ends, that's what eventually, obviously, uh, obviously Obi Wan's on, on that ship, heading to who knows where. Um, literally distraught with the realization that his old pad was alive. And we end with, of course, the unmistakable breathing of the Vader himself. And I'm not thinking, and I'm not. Like, could I, thinking, oh, could I now be a possibility that these two end up meeting up? I mean, we know they do end up meeting up and joining in episode 4, but is there a possibility these two might have clashed before that? Had another clash before that? Who knows? Who knows? But I'm, but I'm now thinking, oh, are we going to get a meet up between these two? It would be interesting if we do. Would it be right, though, in terms of how the timelines go? Oh, no, that way. <laughs> but, yeah. but this was a really good episode, so it really built up the, what we had in the first episode. I thought it was very interesting to trust how we had to spend the entire episode of dealing with um, the fact that obviously all got uh, laid up and nobody could not trust anyone, although she really should have. <laughs> and yeah, so we let, so we did get, and of course, with the Inquisitors, I just feel these are just a bunch. They really should just be like bounty hunters, just in it for themselves. Because they clearly are not. You know, the first episode was supposed to get the signals of like, this group of fear, fierce soldiers who are not mental there. Here, this episode, it just felt like a bunch of mistag misfits who just can't seem to get along with one another and would have no problem stabbing each other in the back. As we saw. <laughs> as we saw. Oh dear. Oh dear. It did give me, because uh, it did for the whole, whole episode, give me, they, they were giving me now the signals of this lot just don't trust each other and I, it, would, it would not surprise me if one of them at some point in the series ends up stabbing them in the back. That did make me happen literally right at the end of the episode itself. <laughs> oh dear. There we go. So now we're left wondering where next. Because surely Leia's got to get back to got to be sent back to, you know, her family. But, is that what we're going to spend part three on? Or is it going to be the long way round? Or are we going to have to do it the long way round? <laughs> I'd rather not do it the long way round. I'd rather the child get sent straight back to her, her family. Because if it's clear, her clear if they're so, so alone, she can't seem to be able to, be ha to handle the situation where she's supposed to be in the cover. How's she going to handle now they're all sort of known and to the rest of the galaxy that they're on the loose. <laughs> yeah, dear. But what a very great episode it was, and I just loved it, and it really sort of left you really, really wanting more. Oh, just amazing. It really was brilliant. 
Well, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for. Thank you so much for watching. If you've loved today's show, do click the like button. Ali Harris, subscribe yet. Thank you. Do click that subscribe button. So that way, once you are subscribed, you're going to miss a single moment. When you call the clock, you can the plus the mouse. Well, until next time, my dear hard ones, thank you for joining us. May the force be with you. And au revoir.